just to start out, give us a sense of, because we, we all know the brand Blue Mercury and where sure. it's at now. Where did you start versus where you are now in terms of your, your what you had, what you were creating, and, and, and where you're going? Yeah, so we started as a beauty e-commerce company in 1999 uh, when I was in my 20s, uh, so a long time ago, um, back during the first dot-com boom. And uh, we quickly realized we were a little bit too early, and so we moved straight from clicks to bricks and started opening store locations. And we started with one store location in Georgetown in Washington, D.C., and had that one location for a while till we figured it out. And so today we're at 180 locations, uh, but it has been a long journey. We've been through two recessions, um, and uh, certainly the dot-com bust in 2001 had a huge impact on us. Uh, but the um, the original idea uh, for e-commerce was really fun because um, I in graduate school I had met this obscure entrepreneur <laughs> uh, who came to talk to us about the internet. So this is in 1999 and. We had, um, I had just gotten my first email address, uh, and Google didn't even exist. And so here this entrepreneur was talking to us about e-commerce and what it was all about, and I was completely intrigued. And he explained how he was going to sell books on the internet. Uh, this <laughs> happened to be Jeff Bezos. Uh, nobody knew who Amazon was. Uh, only 30 people showed up for the talk. Wow. Um, but I was completely inspired, and so that's how we started as a beauty e-commerce company. I just wanted to bring beauty products to the internet. A reminder for people who are under the age of like 30, yes. back in the 90s, this was the day of dial-up. I mean, this yes. was, you did not shop online yet. Yeah. You guys were way ahead of your time. Yeah, in fact, we were too early yeah. because we launched our internet site uh, in 1999 and nobody was shopping on the internet. And so we were all shopping, all the e-commerce founders were shopping from each other and that was about it. Hmm. And so we were almost bankrupt within the first six months uh, because we were too early. And so- and you had a million dollars in investment, in investors? Yeah, so it was an interesting time. It was an easy time to raise money. I say a little bit like today, uh, we raised a million dollars in two weeks to start the company. Uh, and this was just a function of what the internet was like at that point in time. It's I sort of liken it to the CBD cra cra craze today in terms of how people are raising money. It's crazy. Um, but uh, we raised a million dollars in two weeks and we were off to the races. But it was a different time. It cost a million dollars to build a website back then. And all of a sudden, there were five other competitors that had raised 10 to $20 million. And so we knew we were in trouble. We went out for follow-on funding, and everyone said, no, 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 there are too many competitors. We can't give you follow-on funding. Now, what benefited us back then was you could only buy cosmetics at drugstores or department stores. Uh, so our beauty e-commerce idea, although was too er we were too early, the idea of a store was actually revolutionary because 90% of luxury cosmetics were sold at the department stores. There were no freestanding beauty stores. And so by opening a store in Georgetown, we were one of the first freestanding specialty beauty stores. Uh, and stores actually uh, let you touch customers and actually um, were revenue generating, uh, unlike our e-commerce site, which didn't really generate much revenue back then. Uh, so we really, I mean, they call it a pivot now. We had to pivot and change our strategy, but back then it was called a failure and we were almost going out of business. <laughs> so I love the business terms that sort of make it good for the failures, but um, no, pivot, we pivoted. <laughs> did you have to convince investors that it was time to make that pivot? Um, did you just, did you have to trust your own instincts? Because you know, you said that you were able to raise so much money because the internet was sort of hot and a yeah. brand new thing. Yeah, it was really difficult. So our first set of investors did not want us to open a store because they believed in pure in internet e-commerce plays, that was the pitch, that's what we had pitched them on, they didn't want to change course. And so we raised money from a separate set of investors for the stores and then combined the two businesses ultimately. But, but you know, the internet businesses were getting multiples on eyeballs and for stores it's a very straightforward sort of metric which is, you know, how much revenue, how much profit and how much capital did you put in. And that was too um, common for the internet investors. And so we really did have to change how we were talking about the business and how we were pitching the business. And um, during uh, the 2001 NASDAQ crash, there was no capital. So the angel capital and the venture capital closed up shop. And so we ended up getting bank debt for a while on our inventory. Uh, but there was no way to raise additional capital for stores after our first two stores. Uh, so we really had to bootstrap and just figure it out on our own. 